In this video, we're going to tie a fly called the Adams Irresistible. First thing I'm going to do is start with the Tiemco 100 standard dry fly hook. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my thread. I'm going to start it about a third of the way back from the eye of the hook. All this is going to do is just kind of give me a guide on where to stop on the body of the fly. You'll kind of see what I mean as I tie the fly. I'm going to use some Uni ADOT black thread and then we're going to use some black moose body hair for the tail. I'm going to put it in a stacker just to even up the tips and I can tie in my tail. I want the tail to be about half of the length of the body so I don't want it to be a full length, I want it to be half. So I just put it on the shank, pinch off the halfway point and then I'm tying it in there. I'm going to use just a loose wrap of thread and then I can bite down once I get two wraps on there. Then I'm just going to spiral my thread forward until I get to that point where I tie it in. Then I can trim off the excess I can kind of clean up those butt ends, wrap back down the body to make sure everything's nice, smooth, and secure. Then wrap my tail all the way back to the bend of the hook. Then I'm going to take my thread, I'm going to take a couple wraps forward. I don't want my thread to be all the way back there, I want it to be just a few wraps forward. Then I'm ready to tie in the body material, which is just some mule deer hair. This is good for spinning. So I'm going to start with a fairly generous clump, about three quarters of the size of a pencil to about the size of a pencil, depending on the size of fly that you're going to tie. Then I'm going to remove all this fuzziness from that. Just going to pull it off with your fingers. You can use a comb. I usually just pull it off with my fingers. Once you have it all pulled off, I like to trim off all the tips. There's no reason for all those tips. So I'm going to trim them off so I have about a one inch just clump of deer hair. Now I'm going to take that clump and I'm going to lay it over my hook. I'm going to take a nice loose wrap of thread, a second loose wrap, then I'm just going to allow that hair to spin around the shank. Now, the problem when we wrap or spin deer hair at the back part of the shank, it always gets caught in the bend. So I'm just going to hold the bobbin in my hand and use a bodkin or a scissor and just help that deer hair spin and make it around the shank of the hook. Or the bend of the hook, I should say. go. And once you plucked it all free, you can kind of wiggle your bobbin, work a few wraps of thread through the deer hair itself, and work your way forward. And you can push all that deer hair out of the way. Now I'm ready for the second stage of the body. I'm just basically going to repeat the process. On a smaller fly, if you're tying a really small one, you could probably get away with one, but on a 14 or a 16, you'll need to do two. So same thing, just lay the deer hair on the shank, loose wrap, second loose wrap, and just let it spin around the shank of the hook. Now I need to find where I tied in because I do not want to go past that portion on the fly. So I just kind of 
find that black thread, which it looks like I'm right at it. And I'm just going to pull that deer hair all back out of the way. And I'm going to take a few wraps right in front and spiral my thread forward out of the way. Now I'm ready to trim the body. The initial cuts, I'm just going to do some big blocky trims just to kind of get that big mat of hair under control so I can see what I'm doing. Once I get the majority of that big blockiness kind of formed, I can get in and trim around the tail, I'm trying to be very careful not to trim the tail. It's probably the trickiest part of this fly. I've seen guys use tape. That'll help. I've always kind of been able to maneuver and do it without the tape, but tape works fine as well. Now we're going to trim the body so that it tapers back towards the back of the fly. So usually what I like to do is kind of trim it nice and close to the tail first. pulling the tail out of the way when I need to. And then I can kind of taper aggressively back down to the tail. Need to trim around the tail just a little bit more. The, the back end taper is always the toughest one to get right. So go slow. Rotate the vise as you're kind of trimming. Around the bend and around the tail is always the toughest spot. And I always kind of like to block out the front as well because this is where the hackle is basically going to lay. So you want to make sure you have a nice flat portion to tie up against. And I'll switch to my little micro tip scissors and really get in there. close as I can and get things basically as even as I can. And it'll never be perfect. So sometimes you just kind of have to stop when you think it's most of the way there and just kind of call it good. And that's about where I'm at right now. So, we'll call that good enough. Now, the next step to do is we're going to back off a few turns of thread and then lay them down again. I'm going to take my thread about halfway in between the eye and the body of the fly. We're going to tie in our wings. For that, I'm going to use two hen cape feathers. I like to use whiting. And we're going to use grizzly. We're going to take them and orient them so that those two feathers splay away from each other. 
and so that the tips are nice and even. There we go. I want those wings to be about the length of the body. So I just kind of rough measure them out. And I strip away a few of the fibers. And now I'm ready to tie those in. I like to tie them in together. Once you have them tied in, you can trim out the butt ends. Now I'm going to take them and prop them straight up and lay down a few thread wraps right in front of them. Now I need to trim out all those fibers, those extra pieces. and any f extra fibers that kind of splay out. You can see I have a few kind of extra pieces sp splaying out the front that I don't need. So I just grab the wings, pull them back, trim off those extra fibers. Now I'm just going to take my thread, I'm going to lay a wrap in between each of them that will help keep them split apart and again just kind of keep trimming out any of the fibers that aren't cooperating now I'm going to take my thread back to just in front of the body now I'm going to take a brown whiting rooster cape feather measure it out so it just reaches below the point of the hook and do the same exact thing with a matching grizzly feather. I'm going to strip off some of the barbs there, just exposing the stem. And I'm going to tie those both in at the same time together. and trim out those extra quills and lay down a nice smooth thread base for that hackle to wrap forward on now I'm going to take that hackle I'm just going to make that first wrap right up against that deer hair continue to work it forward until I get to my wings. Once I get to those wings, I'm just going to jump in front of them ever so carefully. And wrap up towards the eye. Once I get to the eye, I can just capture those feathers, lay down a few wraps, and I can pluck them out of the way and I can trim off any of those fibers that I trapped on accident now I can just take my fingers pull back as many fibers as I can and sneak up under that eye. This is the trick that takes lots of practice and lots of tying dry flies. Build a small head. Do a quick whip finish. Trim out the excess thread, and you have a finished, irresistible, 
Just kind of puff her all back up. You can trim out any little extra fibers that might have poked out or any hackle fibers that get caught or trapped. There's always a few little stray fibers that the perfectionist in me wants to pluck out. But that is the Adams Irresistible, very effective high floating dry fly. Works great on rivers that have fast little pocket water. You can just pluck that little deer hair fly down in there. But a little bit of practice, a little bit of work, and you can master this fly. I certainly haven't necessarily mastered it yet. Every single one I seem to tie looks better and better, but they're never perfect. Deer hair is incredibly tough to work with, especially on a small fly like this. And that is the Adams Irresistible. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more fly tying videos.